הנה הם מתחילים. Shalom lachem. Hi, Hello everyone, a new life. Thank you for joining us to this series of educational talks with the Rav Michael Lightman. Hello. Hello everyone. Hello Nitzam Azuz. Hello. So we're trying to learn from the Rav Lightman how to build our life here in a better way, how to create a new life, how to create here in Israel a society in which we will all feel just like in one family. And when we'll feel in one family, we'll feel warm, we'll be good, we'll have a connection connection that will allow us to wake up in the morning with light in our eyes, and this is what we want, and this uh, higher uh, goal is something we're reaching by focusing uh, on each, on different aspects in each show of being in such a society, and so now we're focusing on this network that we're all part of in the society. In each um, discussion, we're going to focus on the rules of this network, the new rules of the network and that we're going to build here in Israel and to finally win and gain this happiness. It's good. So, Nitsa, please help us into the discussion today. What are we going to learn today? Today, we're going to talk about lies and cheating. So maybe we should read first of all a few things from the from the scriptures and then we'll ask about it. You mustn't deceive a person and make him sad. You should you should not deceive your friend. Your heart and mouth must always be equal. Also I'll read another excerpt that says um, as follows. One mustn't ask his friend to eat at his place when he knows that he should he shall not eat. He shouldn't give him an, a present that he knows that a friend will not accept. Because what comes of this is that he has one thing in his heart and one thing in his mouth. And he does not intend correctly, but his heart and mouth must always be equal and he must use a, a a language of truth and a true uh, spirit and a true intention. So this is very nice, but it's very complicated when we look at society. Yeah, very complicated. So if we look at society, there's a huge gap between what looks so nice in this way in which we live and this whole matter of lies and deception is very prevalent and, and has really become a, a social norm in our society. Uh, we see that people tell half-truths, they round corners, and nobody is really very impressed by that. And so the first question is, why do we lie? First of all, if we begin to write about the conditions and incidences of how we must behave, all the paper in the world would not suffice. In short, this does not have any rules to it because in each moment, in every situ new situation, in between each and every one, you have thousands and thousands of incidences that you need to take care of. And so if we talk about it in words, just like you read now, I, I don't remember a word from what you just read. I just know that somebody wrote about it who was maybe very wise, maybe he was a good psychologist, but it's not for me. I cannot continue with this book of laws of how to behave nicely and constantly check in this book how I need to treat a person before I open my mouth or even look at you or even think in your direction. So I need to check all kinds of... It doesn't work that way. We can't uh, behave according to a textbook. So we need to make sure that these things will be intuitive to us, that they will be in us naturally, and then we won't need to detail them so much. That we shouldn't behave this way or that way. 
This is endless if we try to treat it in this way. The wise men of morality write, wrote a lot about it, but we unfortunately, or not unfortunately, we see the result that nobody actually can behave in accordance to all this collection of rules. And it's no coincidence that there is the rule of love thy friend as thyself. Because we must only cause a person to think good thoughts at the other in general to have this good attitude. I don't treat my relatives this way or my children. I don't calculate. I just know that the good approach compels me to love them. My love for them is natural, and this is what we need to have here. So it really won't help me if I'll think in advance, I should be this way, maybe it's worthwhile for me to be that way, and he looks at me this way or that. No, it's all politics. It's not a heartful attitude, and therefore it won't last. And therefore, integral education says that we rise a person above his ego and doesn't need to calculate with his mind because these calculations are inside our desire, how he gains and how I gain. And if we want to be interconnected, then we need to work on the connection between us and the intentions for this connection. And then, as much as I can, as much as I understand it correctly, I behave in accordance to that. And the other person understands. For example, I see a child going to an adult, takes the pacifier out of his mouth and wants to give it to you. Have you seen something like that? You have. This to him is the best thing he can do from all his heart. Have you ever taken this pacifier from him? No. But this is what he can naturally do. He enjoys it, so he wants you to enjoy it too. This is how we need to behave also. And then what calculations can you make? Should I give him this gift or that gift? It's like the book about the uh, speaking badly about it, the other. As much as you study it, you can't really use it. All crimes should be covered by, lo by love. This is what we need to be concerned about. It, not, not to make the right calculation like in a courtroom so that I should uh, win a case. So our approach is, needs to be much more simple, much more practical. And we can fulfill it, realize it easily. We need to build the right relationships between us, and we do not mind the past or what's happening now. Even if we take a thousand judges, nothing will help. You know that they, that doesn't really help. The, judis, the, the judges or lawyers don't really help. No, we need to help each person be above his own ego. And then it is certain that he'll know how to connect to the other correctly, to give a gift or not to give a gift. He'll always know what to do. Read it again. Yeah, read it again. I've learned all these books, but it's really, it's not really for realization. You should not deceive your friend. Your mouth and your heart must always be equal. You should not ask your friend to eat with you if you know that he shouldn't eat. You shouldn't give a gift that you know that he should not accept. And also, you should not have one thing in your mouth and one thing in your heart. And it, you mustn't have the wrong intention and your heart and, and mouth must always be equal. That's the most important thing, for your mouth and heart to be equal. And he should use the correct uh, language with a pure spirit and heart. That's right. If I treat another person in such a way, then we don't need the calculations because the calculations are where we have politics, connection that is not so straight, that is not so honest. 
But if your heart and mouth are equal, if you have this honest approach towards another person, then there's no problem. Everything that I do, I do it out of my heart, as pure as it is, according to my degree. Let's hope that it should be more and more. In this, in this way, we will understand each other. Also, if he behaves towards me, just like that baby that brings me a pacifier, I understand that he does it from his heart. So, speaking of babies, there's a very interesting research that was performed on babies, uh, two or three year olds, and they saw that they begin to lie even before they are uh, weaned from diapers, so it's very natural. Like you said, the one thing in your mouth and one thing in your heart. And we think that babies are pure, that their heart is pure, but, it, but you see that they begin to lie in a very young age, even before the age of two. Yes, because man's nature is evil from youth, it's clear. But the problem is, is that they also absorb this from us. They, they are in the same network that we are in. Even though they can't talk, they don't understand yet, the network exists. And they are in the same world together with us. They already absorb from the same waves that are between us, that tie us together. And it already exists in them from the day and moment that they begin to develop inside their mother. They already begin to absorb. Orbit. We think the mother only gives them nutrition or food, but no, they grow inside the mother and absorb everything that goes through her heart and mind. So we need to think about the general correction of society, and by that everything will be corrected. Also for the people of the, of the nation, we can't really tell them you should behave this way or that way. Who would learn it? Who will be able to, to keep all of these uh, um, clauses, all these rules? Ex who studies it? Except for lawyers and, and judges, who actually studies the laws of the, of the state? Politicians, people who want to use it for their own benefit. But nobody else, because you can't behave according to it. And even if you learn it, you can't really realize it. No. And I think this research shows that it's our basic, a basic nature. Well, the wise men talked about it correctly. But it's not that we can now take these things that they wrote and act according to the, these details and rise to their level. Our correction happens not by just f realizing, fulfilling, doing what some sentence says. Oh, I shouldn't do this, so I, I won't. This is what I should do, so I will. By that, I am not correcting myself. I will maybe do some external action like they tell me to, which seems correct, but the correction needs to be a correction of the heart. The entire method is how to correct your heart, and this does not depend on keeping these laws in this way. No, I need an environment that will hold me up, that will influence me and give me a good, simple example of how to behave above my ego in each and every situation in a good approach towards my friends, towards others. First of all, by not doing to others what you yourself hate, and afterwards, love thy friend as thyself. Why do people lie to begin with? I, according to my ego, need to hold myself in a state where I'm higher than everyone, stronger than others. And I always compare myself and weigh myself uh, in comparison to others. And if I need to lie, then I'll lie. Or if I have a different need, and to maybe make you stray from your path, or maybe have someone um, destroy someone else. But by that, I make a disconnection in the system. I stop feeling him. If I receive from the environment pressures to only speak truthfully, 
What, what is this disconnect in the system? You said that you explained to me why I lie. I lie in order to be better than others and more than others. I always aspire. This is, is this a constant aspiration to be more than others for everyone? Yes, a part of our ego. This is our nature. Yes. So you're saying that for this purpose of being more than Nitsa, I need to lie to her, then I'll lie to her. So until here I understand, but now you've added something I didn't understand. You said the moment that I lie to her, then I've made a disconnection in the system. What does that mean? Yes, because it's not the right connection, I'm lying. What is this disconnect? Between us there is this network, this system. This system is so intricate, there are so many lines between us, so in, in our intentions and words and thoughts, in each and everything. So now I've transferred incorrect information to her. There are so many channels between us. And according to this information, she now begins to behave and to take this into consideration, this, this untruthful uh, data, and she begins to behave in reality. Let's say I lied to her about about you. I told her, Oren, it's so and so and so. And she already treats you in accordance to that in a certain way, an untruthful way, an incorrect way. So by that, I've disrupted the system. I can say something good about you that you don't possess. Why? Because by that I increase love and she will treat you in a better way than what you deserve. But, and by that you'll receive a good example of how to behave. Because that is in the direction of the purpose of, re of creation towards the goal that we need to reach. What is the goal? The goal is for all of us to be as one. In the network? Of course, this network constantly closes us up and compels us, for good or bad, to reach connection, that we should reach connection and agree to it, that we will uh, make this connection happen. This is the purpose of our creation and development. So then a lie is really a kind of corruption that I put the wrong information in the system. Yeah, just look at a family. If I lie to someone in the f one of the family members, then I corrupt all the relationships between everybody. The most simple example I thought it wasn't even about people, but let's say I don't know somebody correctly. Maybe if somebody lied to me about my car and I put the wrong fuel and it doesn't, you can't use it anymore. That's right. So then a, a wrong flow of information can disrupt the entire system. That's right. So this is the contribution of the lie to the system. So that therefore, it's a kind of principle in our, in our life because it creates a kind of disruption or corruption. So it's interesting that this need is a basic need to constantly organize things, the system differently so that it will fit for me maybe or... I try to understand why do, does a person have this need to constantly uh, give the wrong information, to twist things in order to give him more profit? Does it make me a more important part of, in, in the system? Always. It always comes from this impulse to make oneself better, stronger, higher than everybody else. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the family, and we know as parents, grandparents, each one, wherever he is, that many times in order to help our children, we use manipulations or small lies, and I'll give an example soon. This is not called lies if it's towards your children, because you're giving them examples. This is called play or acting. When we say, I want to show a child 
how serious I am, how concerned I am for something, then I exaggerate in some of my actions in order to give him an example. This is not called lying. This is called, maybe it's a beneficial lie, but actually it's an example. It's acting, a game. I By that, I, I evoke within him and in the relationship between them more connection. That's why it's not called a lie. I want to benefit him. My intention is good. By that, I give him an impulse to develop. Maybe you, you can you illustrate that for me? Sure. Let's say I want my child to read. He doesn't want to read. He wants to play soccer or football. Yeah, I know that very well. Okay. So every time he sees me, I take a book and tells him, come, come see what is written here. All kinds of things like that. Of course I'm doing it, not because I, uh, not innocently, but I know that I'm doing this, edu it's an educational act. And then it's okay. And then it's okay. Okay, now I'll give you another example. There's a well-known story to all of us. This is called that the children are educating the grown-ups, that the child compels me to be also better, to also read. There's a well-known story about a father whose child was very lazy with very small aspirations and he worked as a simple worker in some factory, he didn't want anything, didn't want to study, didn't want to develop and his father was very sorrowful over that because the child has so much potential. And then without telling this child, he goes to the factory owner and pays him so that he will fire his son so that his son will be able to go from the state of unemployment of this small, safe job to study and to develop. If I look at this in the eyes of our discussion, that you shouldn't cheat or lie, the, the father certainly did something that was deceitful. From, but he was caring, he was fatherly. So I'm giving this as another example that in the relationship between children and parents, so how do you treat this father? He did it for the benefit of his child. This is not a correction. Also, when I use the book to give an example of the child that he should read, the correction really only happens through society. But for now, we're talking about how you should behave at home, just like the rules that she gave. But this is not a correction. Correction is having a society that will constantly raise my child, help him study, help him learn, help him read. Say you played football for an hour, now come study, let's draw. Not just with a ball. Or let's say work. That's good that you're working, but society also needs to encourage him to develop a little bit through society, through the environment, because by that he develops his contact. He rises himself in their eyes and they towards him. It's harmonious. It's in accordance to the law of nature. We always check ourselves in accordance to is it going according to the law of nature? And the law of nature is for all of us to be connected as one man in one heart. This is the test. This is how I test if something is true or false. Yes. Okay, so now I go back to this law that you gave me before, that in other words is the same one that you gave me now, that something that creates a disconnection in the connections between people is harmful. Something that creates connection between the individuals in the network is something beneficial. This is something I understand from what you said, yes? Yes. So then the definitions generally, if I lie, and then you, like you said, I put a distortion into the system, right? That's right. The question is, so then there are states in which I will lie and I will not distort the system, but I will make these components closer to each other. No, this is not really desirable, only if there's danger. What danger? Danger, uh, if a life is in danger, the people hate themselves, uh, hate each other so much that maybe they'll kill each other. So I'm not going to wait to organize an environment, but I act this way because I'm pressured to do so. I have to get rid 
of a threat. Only if lives are in danger can you do this. If not, I should take care and organize education for them. When lives are in danger, there's no time for education. Why? Because if I understand correctly, what you're saying is that Oren is not certain that he even has an ability to judge if it's something that he should tell someone. How can you even judge if something is true or false? And then you say, we should always go to society until there's lives are endangered. Society is the correction because we cause further connection. And it's not that I lied a little bit here or there and then they connect and putsi mutsi and suddenly they're friends. And maybe cause some, uh, some peace. No, I'm talking about the parts of the system that will come closer together and connect and hold each other up because we always need to uphold ourselves on a level higher than our ego. Our ego is always down here and it's a flame like a volcano that's, that's before eruption and we're always covering it more and more and more with our better and stronger connection so that it will not erupt. So sometimes when there is such a big malfunction between you that it causes a, a real disconnect between the pieces of the system, then I intervene or maybe I cut this connection or I put myself between them and say, wait a minute, friends, I'd like for us to be th three, uh, not just two of you. And then I say, let's do something. Let's maybe separate for two weeks to think, not talk to each other for two weeks. And in two weeks, we'll make a meeting and think about something. I act here not for correction, supposedly. I disconnect them, but I do so with parts that cannot be in this good connection. So then this is good. This is what you need to do. And then I have time to treat it through the environment, again, through the environment alone. Because that network that is operating on us, it needs to receive a feedback from us. It needs, I see it, I see all these cobwebs between us, and we need to care for that, that everything will be harmonious and mutual to, at, at rest. When you say harmony and mutuality, is it according, does this mean that in accordance to your perception of reality, then people won't have to lie? Is this possible? What for? For what need? The opposite is true. A person that loves the other, why would he need to manipulate him if he loves him? Once for, for his good, he wants to help him. I don't see a reason for it. I don't see any incidences in the system that compel me to lie to others which means to shame him, to degrade him, to make of him something that I work on, that I fool. What situation can you see that I should do something like this? Maybe a, a very, very extreme incident. Maybe a person is very sick. Maybe their life is in danger. But in a regular situation, why would I? I want an example, uh, I want a good response from him so for us to connect in heart and mind, to be in this mutuality, just like systems that connect, that whatever one has, the other has, and then we connect. If I make a disruption or distortion, then we're not in connection anymore. This system is a system that constantly is revealed. This is why we're feeling this increasing crisis, because it's constantly revealing itself more and more, and we are not compatible with the connections that are being revealed, and therefore we constantly see that we're descending. These connections that are being revealed between us more and more, what are they? They demand truth? What do they demand? 
They demand truth, mutuality, connection, love. They demand uh, integration with one another, meaning that I am integrated with what you have, you are integrated with what I have. How can communication exist, mutuality, without one knowing what the other needs and the other not knowing about the first one? Only when they know each other can they be connected, just like between a couple. If I don't know her character, I don't know things that she likes or hates a few and etc. Then I can't to be in connection to her. That is mutual. This is what we acquire over time. When we get married, what do we know? But we have this willingness to get to know each other over time, over the years. And this is how we get used to each other. And also there, all crimes will be covered by love. What are we, angels? No. No, but we make concessions towards each other. And by that, we advance. So safe in this such an environment that really wants to educate for the path of truth, we'll call it, uh, ways of truth, we'll call it. What, what does it need to teach people in this environment? They do want to be truthful. They do want to, let's say, they come to an, a discussion or workshop that deals with lies and truth. What do they need to learn? How will we begin to discern it? Why does this environment need to teach a person? As usual, first of all, we have a rule. Stay away from bad and, and do good. Without knowing what's bad, there is no correction of evil, and then you cannot proceed to doing good. So, first of all, the discussion needs to be about the extent of the lies within us. Why is it in our nature? How does this lie, lying rule us, uh, control us? How we lie knowingly and unknowingly, unwittingly. And to shortly discern it, you don't really need to go deep inside it and taste it from all the different sides. But in order to understand all you need to understand about lying and in what situations perhaps lying is necessary, just like we tell children, there's a bear outside. It's a lie. But I do it because I have no choice. I have to tell him what he understands so that he won't go outside because it's dark outside and it's dangerous. He has to sleep and so on. So there's no other way. Until I educate him. Until he's able to be educated, there's such a term that a, per, a small person is reaches a stage where he can already be educated, and then I can talk to him in a language he understands. Or, God forbid, if there are older people who are uh, in danger, or special illnesses, or things like that, then I don't tell them the truth. I had such a state where my friend's mother passed away when we were students. And it was two or three hours before a very important test exam. And I didn't tell him. What could I do? It would have completely disconnected him. And maybe he would have had to study for another year until he be able to study again and do this test again. And then I told him, so very special incidences and we need to discern here we can and here we can't and where is the limit because the, we have to be considerate of the other either it's the baby or a friend or someone who's ill God forbid so we, we do this out of love for him out of consideration even though we ourselves maybe are sorry that we have to lie to him or not to tell him the whole truth and everything else, we treat it through the system, only the system that holds us up and renews these connections. All the 
lying where there isn't any danger. We cannot allow them to, to remain. So say the first part of this workshop of Lies of Truth. Okay, so now, how do we actually fulfill all these things? Through building the environment. Okay, so I understand acknowledgement of the bad, but how do we do good? We're not talking about lies or not lies. We're talking about the good attitude. The good attitude is being straightforward and honest, seeing the person in front of me as, as loved, my beloved. I can't lie to him because I love him. I want to, to have such a big channel that's open towards the between us, that won't, there won't be any politics or distortions between us. So if we develop develop such relationships, then we don't even have to think about lies. There won't be any lies. When we talk about a couple that wants to be very loving, wants to build such a loving relationship, do they think about lies? The opposite. They think about everything being open, unlimitedly. Right? So we shouldn't talk about lies in the place that we have love, that there is a willingness to connect. Why is the law, love thy friend as thyself, the, the greatest law? Because it includes within it, within it all of these corrections. You don't need to open a book, this you can't say, or this you can't say, and this is called a lie, and this isn't. A book of rules won't help. Won't help. So the culture in which we live today, we even have a day like that that's called April Fool's Day. Yes. And a kid came to me, a young kid. It was for April 1st, and he came to me. He's a, he's a son of my, my friend. I like him a lot. And he came to me. I didn't even notice that it was April 1st, and he started telling me something. And in the end, he says to me, April Fool's Day. It's so strange. People still, uh, people still do that? I'm telling you, a very young child did this. Well, children. No, but he, 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 perce he got this from the environment. He saw people do this, and then he did it too. He also performed this ritual. So my question is, what is this thing? Is it, isn't it kind of strange? Is, it's beyond. <laughs> I don't know. I, I never actually thought about this because I always thought maybe it comes from a, some ancient source. Maybe there was such a, there was such a god of, of lies or something. I don't know. What does what does it say about us as a human society that we think that this is a, a, a funny thing? What does it say about us that until today we continue with such a day, a day of lies? What, the rest of the year we are truthful? I don't understand. If I came from a different planet, I wouldn't understand what's happening here. They have the day for lies. On this day, you're allowed to lie in public in a revealed way that you laugh at the lies themselves. You understand? There could be a justification for it that we we laugh at the lies. You know what? Let's advance. There's such a thing as pranks. To play a prank at someone at the end, you laugh. Oh, I saw such a thing once on television. Yeah, the rating is always high. So why? I never got this. People laugh at it. It makes them laugh. Yeah, let's say you and I play a prank on Nitsa and everybody else laughs. What I want to say is, I don't understand it. It's uh, the same lie. 
מה מניע אותנו כאילו? What motivates us? Why is it that if we cheated Nitsa and everybody else looked at it, Nitsa in some way, it's not Nitsa. I think this way. As I understood this, I, I saw a few of these things. And I think that people are laughing at their own nature. It's not Nitsa's. It could be somebody else instead of her. Say a woman passes by in the street and they put a certain scene where one person kills the other or yells at him or, or beats him or something. And then the way she behaves in a special way and responds in a natural way and maybe warms up and then, and then it's revealed that it was just a a prank. So it's not a personal matter. It's not that she is this way. They didn't want to shame her. They want to show people well, who are we? What are we? It's a kind of theater to discern the qualities that a person has. And this is why a person usually laughs of these things, because he also laughs because the threat passes. This thing that seemed very strange and stressful and dangerous is suddenly just a joke, a big joke. On the other hand, he doesn't really receive it as personal because he's just a passing by person. It could have been anybody else. It was clear that he would also behave in the same way. By this, people discern who they are and what they are. There's something to this. If there wasn't this stealth of... But if you, if there wasn't stealth here, then on the, if you look at it psychologically, you could use this to learn a lot about people. This is another question I wanted to ask. Can you use this tool of deception and its basis to, to advance us as a society to the state of feeling as one family? It's possible if we do this in a workshop, in a closed environment. Say we're talking about the media, television shows. Say the Israeli society uh, takes this new perception of, that you're talking about and wanting to be as one family. Can we do this through the television? Say, make a, this prank show on television that is is deceitful at its basis in order to advance our general consciousness. It's possible that yes. How? Because this is already educational. You want to study from this. You want to learn from this. There's this matter here that in, in learning and studying, you can bring as many good and bad, uh, good relationships of love and connection, a lot of positive examples. But there's sometimes it's necessary to reveal negative things in order to correct them, because if you only cover them, you don't touch enough, you touch them enough, you don't let a person enough grasping of the good if he does not also grasp the bad. It's one against the other. The way this is how it's done in nature. And therefore, it's possible that in, a com in the uh, uh, company of uh, specialists, we will see in such a great environment, say a hundred people, doesn't matter how many, and we will dis discern a number of scenes, either the entire society. We tell them something happened, this and this and that. And then we see the response. And then we say, no, but they already know in advance that there's something like that could happen here. And then we begin to learn, why was our response this way? Why does, do people respond in such a way? How could we respond differently and so on? So for uh, for the need to study, just like in the prank, prankster on the street, like pr pranks, that's right. So for the purpose of studying, for, of learning from it, in order to give them a, an example of our uh, of our qualities that we need to rise above, we can possibly use such things sometimes. But again, this is because without it, they won't agree to it. They won't. We won't want to rise above enough to notice 
all kinds of small details, how we need to behave well towards each other here or there. This all needs to be clarified in the integral education, in, this, in the process of its fulfillment. Maybe you can give me like a, a scene that we should perform something good that we can study, learn from about human nature or something. I think we should add in this scene that the other side, there's the person who lies and there's the person who receives it from him, who is the, usually the person we laugh about. You don't usually laugh at the one who lies. You you, you laugh at the, the innocent person who swallowed this lie. There are two directions here in this process. I don't know. Okay. Let's say you tell Nitsa that I said something about her. And then we see how she reacts. Something good or bad? No. Let's say I tell Nitsa you said something bad about her. And then I look at her response. Yeah. See how she responds to me saying something about her, supposedly. How she believes you. And how she relates to you giving that to her and justifies you or not. All of this, uh, all, all that happens, you should write it all down and photo it. Does she need to treat you well or doesn't she when you tell her this? Does she react correctly? She tries to justify you or me. If this really happened, why did she get me to think such thoughts about her? Or maybe that I don't belong here at all? Maybe it's just kind of uh, disrespect from the educational system, the, the influence on me, or maybe my friends do not care for me, society, the environment, and so on and so forth. There's a lot to learn from this. It's a very basic thing. We should always hear such words about each other through people and respond in the wrong way. I actually should constantly see myself in front of the system. You don't exist for me, I'm sorry to tell you. And hurt as well. I am standing in front of a system. And towards the system, I respond in such a way. Only towards the system. I only make a calculation with this entire system, with all the people, with all the nation. How do I interact with it correctly, in mutuality, with love, with the right connection, justifying him, giving love to him, to it? And when I hear what I hear, first of all, I need to rise above what I hear in my, with my negative response that could have been. I need to love in return. And now I need to think, how will I act in such a way that there won't, won't be a bad word about me, not because I don't want people to talk about me, but so that we should all rise above it. And then I'm thankful to this revelation of evil because it will strengthen us and, and, and raise us all, all to a higher, better level. There's a process here, a chain reaction. <coughs> until we reach actual correction. 
So for this purpose, we can perform all kinds of exercises in order to, to learn it, because this is a very wide internal situation and subject, very deep subject that we must exercise. We need to perform exercises between us until it becomes a habit. So, um, while we're, we're talking, I've been thinking that today these lies, it, it was, it's a thing of the past. Today it's not even lies, it's manipulations. Everything became so manipulative, so... Uh, subtle. But I don't feel it, actually. By my character, I'm very primitive, I'd say. I'm not able. There's such people who are born in this way, and then they're constantly manipulative. And I personally, I, I like to seclude myself. You know, I like to sit in my room, and if I have what I need for life in my room, I can leave stay in my room for my entire life. Connecting with people and being with people in all kinds of places, I don't know, that's not me. What do I want to say? And so it's very easy to manipulate me because they say something, so they say it. Well, maybe we'll take you for the prank show. Very well. But through the study of the system, I've become accustomed to seeing the system in front of me alone. It's not that I treat everybody well and nicely, but I relate to everyone in a, in a way that I'm thinking about the, the damage that they're creating to the system, or the opposite, how much he adds to the system. That's all, all that I take into consideration. The system, a person is not a person on his own. He doesn't exist. If we all talk about all of us as one family, there is no single person in this family. And each one in this family, whatever he does, is influencing the entire family. And then I treat him in such a way. This is how I accept him. And my response is in accordance to that. The response, when you see the system, the response is in accordance to how much a person is acting. You want to help the person to enter the system. And you yourself, the way you participate in everything, coming into balance. This is how we need to see things. Never look at one person alone. He doesn't exist. We are all parts of the integral system. So then in this one family, in this illustration you're giving of a family, every movement that an individual makes influences the entire family. That's very clear. But then this essence of a family, this no. It's greater than any person in the family. Yes, many times more. The being of the family, the entity, is much greater than the person because the unity is a higher power than them. When you say that the Israeli society and its good future depends on becoming this one family, then this means that when you say we need to look systematically at things, it's like looking at things through the eyes of a family, if I interpret it. Yes. So then the limits of society, if we succeed at going with this vision that you're illustrating for us, I, as an individual in a family, you have the member of the family. In the society, you have the citizen. So a citizen that will be able to connect to the system, to this family, to the society, what will this do to his private life? How does this emotionally influence his life as an individual 
But he begins when you give him these new glasses through which he interprets everything in his life, not from his individual original place as an individual, but out of this new higher state that we've built, the family. He looks at things systematically in a family way. What does this do to his life, to his emotions? How does it change him? All his senses change. His five senses begin to receive a different manner. He begins to see the world through new glasses, through the matrix, through the system. Where he suddenly sees above time and space, he begins to feel a different world. But he's lied to. Is he hurt by that? Is he offended? No, because he doesn't take it personally. Why not? Because whoever's lying to him is harming himself. He is disrupting the general system. Whoever harms the other is harming himself because he's influencing the system in such a way that he gets a feedback from the system. He doesn't even feel it because of his own dis distortion. He doesn't even feel how much this this corruption returns to him and not to anyone else. There are completely different rules here, the rules of the integral world. It's the same world, both the same form of relationships that we're heading towards now. So I have a question here. Let's say there's someone in our society that is very sophisticated, a manipulator, that makes a lot of steps to do so. So now you're putting him on his higher level. What does he perceive? Well, he can't do any of the things he did before. Why not? Because he sees how much he's harming the general society and himself. The only thing you can do in society for its benefit is the connection. This is the integral education that we need to instill in society, and then it will rise above and, and rebuild itself, rehabilitate itself. Another question. Let's say I connected to this higher view, this family systematic view of society. So you said, if somebody lies to me, I won't be offended by it. No, but you will feel sorry and sad that he lied because he did this damage to himself and to society at large, but you personally know. Of course you yourself are hurt by it because you are part of this system. If I understand, Let's say in my body, where all the organs tie together, now the liver begins to behave badly, to lie, doesn't want to be in, in tight connections with all the other organs, won't they all feel it? Of course they will. And who would suffer, suffer the most? The most uh, gentle organs will suffer the most. The most... Uh, the most sensitive organs will suffer the most. So if we can look, if I manage to look at society out of this view of the family or system, then no interaction someone does towards me touches me personally. There's no such thing as personal. You're part of the system. You receive this entire system as you. It's you. What does it mean, one? One family, one heart. So what does it mean that one's heart and, and mouth are equal, to, sum, to summarize? What is it when your mouth and heart are equal? It's when all of your heart and all your mind, my desires and thoughts are all in the system, and they act only for the good of the general system. 
That's it. Very simple. Okay, our time is up. Simply. I don't think we need to go into all the details that you brought. You're saying it's, in, it's enough for our heart and mouth to be equal, heart and mind. We need still to talk about the realization of this. Thank you very, very much, Rob Lightman. Thank you, Nitsa Mazos. Thank you, our viewers, for being with us. And let's go into this system. It's good there. It's warm. It's, it's connected. So until next time, all the best and a new life.